Hello. So it's currently 20 past midnight. And I've just finished holiday celebrations here in my place. So I thought, hmm, I should make a video about hash maps and finish chapter 8. So here we are, a video about hash maps. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about creating and adding to hash maps. First of all, I should tell you that a hash map, um, in other programming languages, they have several names, like dictionaries and whatnot. Uh, in Rust, we call it hash maps, and pretty much just what it means is that it's a key value pair type of data structure. And if you don't know what that means, I'll show you in a second. Uh, one difference from hash maps from strings and vectors is that it's not included in the prelude. So to use it, to use it you have to use std collections and bring hash map into scope. Now once you have this into scope, you can just come here and like we usually create anything. Just say, let's call this S, let's call it HM. And we say hash map double colon new. Okay, and you don't have to explicitly define it, but just so I show you uh, already how the key value pair comes into place. What you'd say here, for example, you could say string and I32. So this would be a key and this would be a value for that key. So they're uniquely associated. Okay. Now to add a value to this hash map, we can say hn insert and suppose I'm now talking about certain teams and the points they have, I could send I could then say blue to string, so symbolizing the team blue and they have 10 points. Similarly, I can have red and they have 100 points. You know, just to display it to you, I can come here, I can have this formatted, this formatter, and print HF. Okay, now let's just run this. Not clear. Let's run cargo run. Once this compiles, we see that we have this hash map of a key blue, a key red, value 10, and value 100. All right, now talking about accessing values in a hash map. Uh, just like we had in vectors, we have two uh, methods. One uses get and the other one uses just like you would in normal arrays. So um, the get, what you would do is you can come here and you will always access an element in a hash map from its key. So for example, I could say hm.get and I would then say blue to string. Okay, so I'm, I'm passing in the value of the key. I will never pass in the value of, I suppose, the value. And I'll pass it in as a reference, okay. Uh, now having this, the second method, let's just copy this print, so we do it better. And right here we can just say hm, once again, reference. And we'll say um, blue dot to string. Okay. Now let's say this, let's call this one, this two, and this will be a reference as well. And if we run it, we'll see that we have some 10 and 10. So just like in vectors, the difference is, is the same. You have uh, this as a variant from the option enum and this just the value itself meaning that in this case if we uh, If we were to access a key that doesn't exist in the hash map We'll just get none or well, in this case we'll panic Okay, okay so just some complementary stuff uh, We don't need this reference here just because of how the print line macros uh, works um, to create um, a hash map you can also do it from vectors. So I could create a vector called teams, a vector called scores, and then use iter and zip, these two functions, to create a hash map from it. Uh, also using the function collect. I'm not going into that, but you can, uh, you can check um, the Rust programming book for more info. And other than that, I want to show you how to um, iterate a hash map. Now you'll see that we have, of course, a key value pair, 
and just like in how we would in the other data structures, we'll say in, we'll pass in a reference to our hash map, and then I can come here and just say I'll print the key, and besides the key, I'll print uh, the value. Okay. Oops. Now, if we run this, uh, red and blue. Okay. Also, another side note: uh, you saw that here at the end, I have this code. This is uh, complementary code that I write as I'm reading the book. And I always post it to GitHub, to GitHub, at least I have since maybe chapter seven or so. So if you're interested in seeing some extra stuff that I came up with while reading the book, just by all means, check out GitHub and sometimes there's some interesting stuff. So yeah, that's about it, about iterating and some, and tying up loose ends. Okay, let's talk about updating just to finish off. Um, there's a couple of different things you wanna do when updating. Um, an example is just overriding. Overriding is the simple, so simple of them all. Is the the simplest of them all and the way you do it is just by uh, inserting an element on top of what we currently have so for blue it's already there so if I want to just overwrite that value just completely ignore it I can do this okay so as in hash maps the keys have to be unique this will just uh, overwrite whatever we had so if I just come here and I print after this, uh, you'll see that we have blue as that and no longer 10. Okay, so that's overriding. Now, another thing that's interesting and that we might want to do is only create um, that value if it doesn't exist. So, what if in here I only wanted to make this uh, blue have this amount of points if blue didn't already exist in HashMap? How would I do that? And Rust allows us to do this in a really simple way, which is hm, and we'll do entry. The entry function is just giving us access to a specific um, a specific key, uh, giving us hmm, giving us access to a specific key value pair with a key. Okay, so we do this, and now if it exists, um, if I were to just print this entry code. It will, and it exists, it will tell us that it's a occupied entry. But if it doesn't exist, it will tell us that it's a vacant entry. Okay, so we have access to this entry in the hash map. And what I want to do is I want to insert, I want to or insert, and let's make this value. Oops. Okay. Now let's just comment this out because. So now blue will still be 10. And here what I'm doing is, okay, if blue doesn't exist already, create it and may, and give it this value. Okay. Now if I run this, and let's print it. So what will happen, blue already exists, so blue shouldn't change its value. As you see, it stays as uh, 10. But now if instead, I were to come here and I was to, and I were to say yellow. Let's give it a value of one. You'll see that we didn't print it. You'll see that we get red, yellow, and blue. Okay, so that's how you create if it doesn't exist. Another interesting thing that you can do uh, when you have explicitly defined your hash map is you can say or default, in which case it will just give um, the default value from that type. So i32 will give the value of zero if it doesn't already exist. Okay. Now, one last thing that I wanted to mention was DREFs. Suppose that I wanted to create a hash map, not create a hash map, sorry, create, rather insert or change or update a hash map value based on its current value. So suppose I wanted to increase yellow's point by one. How would I do that? And the way we do this is by using the refs. This was also part of the uh, module in vectors and it didn't go through it because 
we haven't really covered the rest and I didn't want to confuse anyone with just random notation because there's a lot to the rest that we can talk about but um, I'm not going to talk about it in this video but I think what I'll do is if you're interested I'm going to make like a, I don't know, a really quick video just talking about how to um, use the rest to update values in hash maps and vectors and if you're interested uh, check it out check it out but if you're not and you feel like you're going to get confused just just don't check it out okay okay so it's almost 1 a.m. so I'm gonna get going but uh, well I hope you appreciate this video and yeah I'm, I'm not sure if you celebrate holidays but if you do happy holidays if you don't just just have a good day I'll see you around